right. So if life is so precious, why do we keep screwing with our lives? Why do we take such chances? Driving too fast, driving while we're texting, doing drugs, and all the crazy things. Let's talk about it. Life is precious, so let's cherish it. This is Vivi from Vivi's Views, and just give you a quick little uh, explanation. I've been gone for about a week. I had some issues. I was dealing with some problems, and um, I was ill, and I have some really heavy situations going on at my job. Uh, my coworker. That carried my department on a certain floor uh, was hurt and had to resign and so the burden fell on whoever we fill in and we try to make it happen I left and went on vacation and when I came back everything that was supposed to have been done by a co-worker of mine was left flat on my desk so talk about turkey without a head that's one of my videos you should check that out this was times three, times 10. I came back in from my vacation and everything that was supposed to have been done when I was away, was waiting on my desk, yo. Waiting on my desk. And my supervisor is on vacation and her supervisor is left to manage. And you know, sometimes you're in these jobs and you feel that like no matter how you open up your boca, you may as well shut your mouth if you want a paycheck because you talk too much, they're gonna fire you. Because you are a troublemaker. Well, these are kind of the issues that I have. So that is why I was gone. I was absent because I'm pressing in. I'm having to break my rules and use the lunch break, do whatever I can not to get flustered and anxiety attacks. But I pushed and try to get on, on top of the stuff. I still am not on top of it. I was looking today. I still have two columns left that this guy didn't do. Every day I'm, I'm, I'm punting down the mountain. Just waiting for the woman to come back so I can put the complaint in. Anyway, but let's move on to my topic. My topic tonight is, uh, today, is why, if life is precious, why are we not taking careful note of it, right? I was riding home tonight, or sometime this is, what is it now, about nine in uh, New York. It was about six hours or so, uh, maybe... Uh, I would say three hours ago. And I noticed this man was in front of me driving extremely fast, but he just kept drifting in, drifting into my lane, drifting in, drifting in. And I'm like, should I sit behind him? If he hits somebody, I stand to get into a, a problem with it. For, for me, I saw this guy driving erratic and I said to myself, I got to get away from him. That's what I've been taught. Something is off of this guy. Either he's sleeping, he's falling asleep, he's tired. That has happened to me, has happened to you. Or uh, maybe he's drunk, right? I'm trying to pass him. I make my decision and I'm deciding to pass him on the left side. Homeboys start drifting into my lane. I toot my horn insistently, right? And when I pass him, I look in his truck, brand new truck, one of the new trucks. Homeboy is in there driving and texting. And I'm like, unbelievable. Because at the end of the day, not only will he take my life or some other innocent person's life, most times they get away and they don't die. The innocent die. I might die, another person might die, and our families are really depending on us to give them the support that we give, right? The other thing I want to say is that a lot of times you see celebrities and, and big name people living raunchy lives and doing crazy stuff and they're untouchable and nobody can touch this nobody can sink this ship right but you don't know you see the beginning of these people but you don't see the end of their lives where they're stuck in nursing homes or they're stuck in renting out a hotel because they never thought to buy a house they never thought to invest in their future, many of them go broke 
MTV used to have a program. Maybe they still do. I don't know. I don't watch them anymore. They got too raunchy for my taste. But they had a show that showed you where these people ended up. They ended up poor and broke and destitute. So I asked myself, if life is so precious, why aren't we cherishing it? If life is so precious, young people, why are you smoking K2 and, and, and doing marijuana every single day until your brains have holes in them? Why aren't you cherishing life? And because you're 25 and you're 18 and you know, you think you got it like that. Well, my grandmother used to say something. She used to say your fart can wake you up because you see when you're hanging out with your friends and they're encouraging you to drink, to use K2, to use marijuana, to use Molly, to use all these different drugs. When you get in your scrape and you turn a big old man and your family leave you, they're fed up with you. They're fed up with the way you have become. They're fed up with how you poop on yourself. They're fed up with how you break everything up in the house. They're fed up with how you want to beat on your mother. They're fed up with how you take feces and wipe it all over the walls. They're fed up with how you disrespect your mother and tell her that you want to have sex and you're touching your penis. I mean, all morality has gone out the door. And so your parents dash you out in the street and you're going from one shelter to the next. You can't even get your act together. So the shelter dash you out too. Now you're homeless in the street. And when the winter comes, you're making an excuse and telling the hospital that you feel suicidal so you can get a bed to sleep. Where are your friends? Where did all of them go? Nobody wants a loser beside them. So when you start losing, everybody is gone. You're on your own. You're dying in some sleazy corner of the world in some hole from HIV. Or you got full blown AIDS. Because when you were binging on your K2, you didn't care who you slept with. If life is so precious, why are we taking it for granted? There is always a flip side to this thing. So you better get your act together because the flip side is if you live raunchy and you live with no concern for tomorrow, tomorrow comes and kicks you right in the backside. I'm saying it raw. I'm saying it real. You better find a way to get off K2 because K2 fries your brain and you have nothing left and you're like a vegetable staring and talking bubbling nonsense. Get your act together. You think you're young now, but if you do not die before you get to 50 and 60, you're going to be nothing but a burden on the state within which you live. Wake up people. If life is so precious, why? Aren't we cherishing it? Okay. Hey, my plan on this channel has always been to talk about life issues and challenges. And so I came at you with a hardcore challenge and a life issue that has been bothering me. Okay. We also work with teaching you entrepreneurial, uh, ship, you know, teaching you entrepreneurial things and I'm removing you, sorry, moving you from the corporate world into the entrepreneurial lifestyle. We load videos every day. I have been gone. I don't know when I'm going to get back full into the everyday stream, but I'm going to keep coming at you as best I can until they hire somebody to help me out in this office. But for now, I'm going to sign out and I'm going to say, think about your life because if life is precious, why are we texting when we're driving? Why? There's somebody at home waiting for us to come home. Why are we texting? Why not pull over and text? Why put somebody's life in danger? Why are the bicyclists being, uh, the cyclists being killed in New York City? Because the cabbies are rushing for the next fair and they don't care whose head they pop like a watermelon. It's only a fair. Life is worth more than a couple of dollars. Wake up, man. Wake up. And let's cherish life because none of us can't make life. We can't. When your head busts open like a watermelon, no doctor can fix that back. You can't take a one and say, oh, okay. 
Okay. He's good. Listen, man. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you don't like it and you want to give me the thumbs down, give me an explanation. I like to be interactive. Tell me why you don't think it that, you know, it, it's good or it sucks. Tell me why it sucks. All right? I look forward to seeing you in the next video.